Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. Hey, this is Big Chief and welcome to the Bourbon Road. You know what I love to make cocktails with? Some bourbon aged maple syrup from seldom seen farms and up in Ohio. He's taking bourbon barrels. He pours his farm made maple syrup into that barrel for six to nine months. He ages it, pulls it back out, bottles it up, sends it out for cocktails like an old fashioned or a Manhattan. Instead of using that nasty old simple syrup, we're using that delicious bourbon aged maple syrup for that. Check them out at seldomseenmaple.com. Yeah. So the bourbon road is still on that Texas journey, traveling down Highway 281, what I used to know as the Milk Road, Texas Whiskey Trail. And uh, we got down here to Blanco, Texas. That sounds like there would be a gunfight in the street in Blanco. Um, it's just <laughs> one of those kinds of towns yeah. down the road. And I got two special guests with us. I got some bourbon royalty up here. We stopped at Milam and Green Distillery here in Blanco, Texas, and I got Marlene Holmes. She is the wicked woman of whiskey. <laughs> She's got some lineage. Uh, she brought down here to Texas some whiskey knowledge. Uh, Marlene, welcome to the Bourbon Road. Thank you, Mike. Glad to be with you. And I got Miss Blair from Whiskey Women on here. She mm -hmm. actually has her own podcast too, and uh, but she is uh, their PR woman, their social media woman. She set everything up for us. Blair, welcome to the Bourbon Road. I am so happy. This is actually uh, what's my uh, it's first time as a guest of as a, a guest? Whis yeah whiskey podcast. So <laughs> yeah. here we go. <laughs> yeah. So we're setting in a Rick house and I just, this is a working distillery. There's no doubt to me. There's, I, you know, I was walking through the steel house and, um, some beautiful steels, uh, with that, that big old, uh, swan neck on it from Vendome, just amazing. But you can see some, some corn milled on the, on the steel house floor in there and the steels, you got a lot of construction going on right now. You got a big old giant slop tank uh, being do. put in, but I appreciate you taking some time out of your day because I it is it's crazy out here. You even put us to work. You're like, <laughs> that's right. You're yeah. like, get your brother up there and get him to get that barrel out of this Rick house for us. Um, so uh, we were we were glad to help out, and we're glad you brought us in. Uh, yeah, but we got some whiskey in front of us, and that's what we are here for, right? Um, to talk about. So what's the first whiskey we got in our glass? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is this will be your single barrel. Um, this is, in my mind, this is how uh, you really should begin the journey here. Uh, first of all, because it is our lower proof whiskey, we proof it down to 86 um, proof. And but it's just it's this is some of the best of our barrels. So uh, I like I like starting off on a high note. And I don't know, Marlene, any any fun Fun facts about the single barrel that you like? Well, it's uh, it's special because it is a single barrel, and mm -hmm. they're always a little bit different. So that's that's a great thing about a single barrel. I love it. We'll get into the whiskey. We'll nose it real fast, taste it, and then we're going to get into Marlene's, uh, her story. Uh, and, man, uh, just walking around with you, Marlene, and some of the stories you've been telling, I just I sit, feel so privileged to get to hear those stories. But we're going to let our listeners hear some of those stories. And uh, But first to this whiskey right here, I say cheers. 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 This has actually got that uh, dried nectarine on it. Um, oh. Yeah, I like to eat on those a little bit. Whenever you put a charcuterie tray, uh, you put some of those dried nectarines on there. Some other dry fruits, maybe some dried uh, dates. Some sugariness on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, I like that. I like the idea of, uh, yeah, the smell when you open the bag of cranberries. <laughs> That's I do nice. get a little bit of a uh, little bit of those raisins, maybe because you said that, but raisin bran, that cereal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's just got a tad bit of raisin bran's got this tad bit of sugar on it. Uh, and I get that in this very beautiful nose on this. Let's taste this thing. That, that sweetness rolls right over the tongue, and that nectarine is there it for is. me. It is, yeah. Um, probably because I said it right. <laughs> yeah, I planted that seed. Yeah, yeah, but that nectarine is there. It's not a nectarine is not overly sweet. The dried ones aren't. It's not sugary like most dried fruit. So I like that. I like it. You're gonna hear dogs barking. We're we're all right with that. 
Yeah. <laughs> Very great whiskey, Marley. Now, was that, is this a sourced barrel or is this something you guys distilled on site? Uh, this is a sourced. Yes. Sourced. Yes. And where'd you guys source this one from? Uh, this one comes out of Tennessee. Out of Tennessee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I like it. Um, you know, it, I still think people are like, oh, it's sourced whiskey. Um, it still takes a craftsman or craftswoman, I guess, to go into a distillery and pick out great barrels, I think. Um, it, not anybody can just do it and say, I'll just take those 10 barrels right there. Um, I'm sure that's not what you guys are doing. You're going there and trying to hand select the best of the best we that do. you get your hands on. We do. We taste everything uh, before we dump. And, uh, yeah, because each barrel is a little different. And uh, so, yeah, that's a great part of the job is uh, on a daily basis, uh, pulling a few samples and and see what we've got available to dump. God dang, somebody's got to do it, that's though, right? That's right. It's a tough job. <laughs> somebody's got to drink for whiskey that's for right. a living. Well, and, and I like to think of like sourcing has become this word for a problem we don't actually have, right? It's uh, the the whiskey tradition of Scotland was independent bottling and was master distillers traveling between distilleries and, you know, pubs pulling different barrels from different distilleries and making a bottle out of that barrel. And you didn't know where necessarily where it came from, maybe down the road, maybe three cities over or three towns over. But uh, whiskey traveling and coming to to the consumer and that's 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 what whiskey should be doing uh so we're just able to find the best whiskeys we can and and put them in bottles and let's do that yeah marlene so your lineage really you're you're a kentucky girl right that's right born and raised yeah Absolutely. Where yep. were you born at in Kentucky? Uh, Central Kentucky, a little town called Campbellsville. Oh, everybody knows where that's at, yeah, right? Yeah, Campbellsville mm-hmm. University. Yeah. Absolutely. They were just actually, they hit, a couple of tornadoes hit down there. Yeah. They did, yeah. yes. Um, our prayers go out there for the families, and they're still recovering from that. Um, so if you need to help them out, there's plenty of stuff online about that, especially Kentucky Tornado Relief, uh, I believe, dot com. Go check that out. Um, but you made your way a little bit north and. At some point, you said, I'm going to start making some whiskey or get into the whiskey business. Or have you always been in whiskey business? No, I actually uh, come into it a little bit, uh, what I call late in life, because a lot of the folks I worked with there in Kentucky, uh, you know, started at the distilleries uh, right out of high school. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I was a few years uh, finding exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, so early 30s. Uh, got into the business and hadn't looked back. It's been great. Now, you worked for one of the greats in whiskey, right? <laughs> I did. The world's finest. Booker, no. Yeah, he he liked his whiskey a little bit. He loved it. And we were sitting around talking about that. and So you worked 27 years there at Jim Beam? I did. And what'd you do there? Um, did a variety of things, actually. Started out, the first job I had was, uh, you know, when you empty a barrel... Uh, it's, you know, a lot of people may not know this, some do, but you've either got a, uh, select barrel or you've got a coal barrel. And, uh, so, uh, you've got to do something with those empty barrels. And so that's the first 10 months I was with Jim Beam. Uh, my job along with, uh, another person would be to, to coal, to select and put those barrels in box cars. And so uh, that's what I did for 10 months to start with was lift empty barrels. And, uh, you know, I kept telling myself, what in the world are you doing uh, here? Because, you know, it was pretty physical work. Uh, barrels weighed more than I did. Uh, but, you know, there was just something about uh, the culture that, uh, you know, I, I hung in there and uh, stayed with it. And after uh, about 10 months, then went to the distillery and uh, started making whiskey uh, on night shift, what we call third shift, graveyard shift, and did that for 10 years. And then moved in, uh, did a variety of things. Uh, Bottling, uh, was a whiskey cutter, red whiskey, white whiskey, uh, loading export tankers. Uh, So did a little bit of everything. So you just kind of went from the very bottom all the way at the top and you're then you're hanging out with book or no somehow. i know yeah i bet that was like just you know you go to work every day and i'm gonna get to work with a legend here um that it's got to be kind of mesmerizing so you at some point you were like okay i'm gonna head to texas w- what happened there 
Well, uh, uh, there was a guy that I worked with uh, that knew Marsha Milam. Marsha's our founder. And so just through a mutual acquaintance that I, uh, that I worked with and she had met uh, in the consulting business, uh, she was looking for a distiller. Uh, I had been there at that time, almost 27 years, was just looking to do something a little different. And uh, so Marsha and I met, and I come down, I spent the weekend, uh, and uh, come out to the distillery here in Blanco, met the folks here, uh, tasted the whiskey, and just fell in love with Alston Hill Country and the folks, uh, the members of the team at that time. And uh, yeah, I decided to take that chance and and come down it's hard not to fall in love with the countryside here we were talking yesterday and uh driving in on today we kind of drove some back roads coming in just not down highway 281 but we had to cut across some back roads some old back roads we used to run all the time and if you just kind of close your eyes and you know you're in texas you think you're either in southern oklahoma or even uh northern mexico um driving down the road um it's a lot so of dust. beautiful down here <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, all that cleachy dust down here um, yeah we've uh, got a lot of it but uh, you know i had never been to hill country prior to that i'd been to dallas uh north texas so that was my idea of what texas amarillo dallas area uh and then when i come into alston uh you know it kind of reminded me a little bit of the rolling hills of kentucky and uh, i was uh, pleasantly surprised uh but it's beautiful it's a little greener up there <laughs> it is it's a little greener but the you know the oak trees here and yep, what, what yep. have you uh, looks, didn't expect it yeah, so uh, it's super beautiful down here um so they brought you in you looked at it and you're just like this is going to be home i'm going to do this I'm going to pull the trigger. Right, right. Yeah, I made the decision actually pretty quick. Uh, I did. Uh, you know, I, I, I read what I could about the distillery at the time uh, as, and Marsha as well. And uh, like I said, I was looking to do something a little different. Uh, I had thought for a year or two there, the last couple of years at Beam, that I'd like to get in with a craft distillery and just kind of get back in, get the, my hands back in. Uh, more of a hands-on type operation. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I took that leap and it's was it's been great. Now, Mylan and Green, it used to be Ben, ben Mylan, uh, and you guys went through a branding change and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, but tell me about uh, the startup of Mylan Green. Oh, oh well, uh, I can I can speak a little bit to that because uh, that's actually how I got interested in this brand was hearing about how uh, first of all there's this distillery Ben Milam which our founder Marsha Milam named after her third cousin I believe a Texas history uh, Revolutionary War hero, but it turns out uh, Revolutionary War heroes are not great branding. Uh, pieces outside of Texas. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that Marsha did was she had read Heather Green's, our master blender and our CEO, uh, read her book, Whiskey Distilled. And was just like, I got to talk to this woman. And uh, Heather is actually was my whiskey mentor uh, by book only at the time, but now uh, in person. Um, but she they they had a conversation and I think Heather was was just supposed to consult for Ben Milam just to figure out like, OK, how do we how do you how do you uh, create longevity in this brand and how do you get this brand to go national? And then through, I, I think, just, yeah, similar, just uh, Heather's from New York. So she also fell in love with the Hill Country. We have a spell here yeah. <laughs> down in Texas. They'll uh, come to visit. Yeah, you'll stay. You'll, you will stay. <laughs> yeah. You will stay. Um, and so Heather uh, and Marsha created uh, just, I mean, I think Marsha just was like, hey, come down here. We'll, you know, make whiskey with me. Um and she had already had Marlene. I think, Marlene, you were definitely also a selling point for Heather. Uh, but uh, just, yeah, let's let's create a brand that um, is not just about uh, sort of these Texas icons, but is really something about uh, creating moments with whiskey and, and creating really delicious whiskey. And so, like, that's what Milam and Green whiskey as a name should be we hope our is going to be because synonymous is just really tasty whiskey <laughs> i have a whiskey friend that's really into uh whiskey education or bourbon education and uh i was looking at your guys website and i was so shocked that there's so much whiskey education for free 
yeah. on your guys' website. I told him about it, and him and his uh, future wife were like, oh, my God, I just love that they're doing that for, for the people out there making money off it. You guys aren't trying to make money. You're trying to educate the public Absolutely. and help people out understand whiskey. And um, I got to I gotta say thank you so much for giving the whiskey community, the bourbon community, that education for free. Uh, that's just, to me, that's just amazing. I mean, that's one of the things that really drew me to Heather um, as a, a beginning whiskey uh, a connoisseur myself was just authenticity and transparency on packaging and just knowing what your label says, lear learning and then learning how to appreciate your whiskey even more. There's only benefits that can come from that. And so even if we're teaching you how to enjoy other people's whiskey, that's fine. <laughs> um, as long as there's just a deeper understanding of what's in that bottle and what you're tasting. Let's uh, grab that second uh, pour we're going to drink. Yeah. Um, and we'll... Uh, We'll talk about the bottle because I really want to kind of get into the bottle itself and sure. the labeling. Yeah. So what's the second whiskey? Well, we're let's let's uh, let's grab the triple cask. I, I also like this as part of like the second step after the single barrel because the triple cask um, has it does have our Texas distillate into in it, uh, but it also has Tennessee distillate and. Depending on the bottle and depending on the month, it could even have Kentucky distillate Kentucky, now. Yeah, right? so triple cask uh, could have a triple state <laughs> meaning to it at some point, but uh, it will. You, we can't necessarily commit to what barrels will be in there because the the idea of the triple cask program is to really um, marry three. Di three different casks of different ages of whiskey uh, from different states. Like it will always have multiple states in it, but. Three different ages. Uh, we start off with that two-year Texas whiskey, uh, which Marlene, you should really talk about. I love, I love it when you describe the triple cast because you you give each of them a little personality. So you should take that. Well, uh, th this was the first project that uh, uh, go to go back uh, to what uh, Blair was talking about earlier. Uh, Heather come down uh, the first summer I was here uh, to do some consulting, and uh, so this was the first blending class that we had with her and. Uh, um, so this is where this product evolved from that class that day uh, that she spent with us. But it's three different aged uh, whiskeys. Uh, the two-year-old uh, is our whiskey we make here in our pot still. And it's the one I kind of label as the juvenile of the bunch, the teenager. It's a little sassy, uh, a little uh, bit of a show off. It kind of pops in your mouth when you take a taste. Um, and then it moves on into that four-year-old, five-year-old whiskey that's there uh, where you pick pick up a lot of those great sweet notes, uh, the vanillas, the caramels, and what have you, and then uh, and then finishes off with a nice 12-year-old uh, whiskey that's in there, and uh, some of the uh, maybe tobacco, uh, tannins, leather, leathery notes, woody, oaky type notes, and uh, this is just fabulous, though, because uh, to me, when you taste it, you can taste all three of those. Uh, different aged whiskeys that's in there. If I didn't know any better and I knew I wasn't in a, at a distillery, I would uh, almost think this is some agave like nectar right here. Really? Yep. Okay. Uh, that, you know, it's almost like a honey that other people use. It, it It's just, it's awesome. But that yeah. nose on here is that right there. It, it's super sweet to me. Yeah, a little maybe a little salted caramel on there. Yeah, um, I, I, whew, that is so that smells so yeah. delicious. And that's a testament to Heather's, you know, blending. That lady's amazing with her blending abilities, and her nose uh, is is fabulous. How she can take you know, different products, ages, uh, and, and blend them together to come up with something that is just really fabulous. I get a little bit of that new boot leather. You know, you walk into a Texas boot store and mm -hmm. you, you yeah. get that little whiff of wet leather there. Yeah. Uh, but more of that agave uh, is is just amazing on the nose. Well, I say cheers. 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 Oh, yeah. This is a 94 proof. Mm-hmm. Does well just to sip it or in a cocktail. Blair's got a cocktail. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, this is actually my favorite thing. Um, I'm still a bartender in downtown Houston. Uh, and whenever somebody, they ask for an old fashioned, but they don't specify the whiskey. I mean, this is what I'm using. Now, uh, wait a minute. You're driving from yes. Houston to here like every day? 
Oh no, not every day. No. How far uh, is Houston? Houston's three hours. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a fact. <laughs> it is a three hour journey. Uh, but you know, look, it, if you love uh, a job, and this is where the distillery is, and that's where the that's where one of the largest whiskey markets in Texas is. Yeah. You know, that's where, that's where I'm going to get, that's, you're going to make the drive. It's uh, it's very easy to be motivated to wake up early to drive to the distillery. I'm not going to lie. Let's talk about uh, this bottle right here. Was this original packaging right here? The bottle itself? Um, that it, is. Yes. It is. It's like a bulged out stag junior bottle. I mean, it is, it's big. It, sure. For me, it's fine, right? Yeah. I, I got gigantic hands. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, I love it. Uh, but to me, and I, I don't want to offend anybody here, but it's got a very feminine um, shape it's to it. It's got a little bit of a heart shape, yeah. perhaps perfume bottle yeah. shape to it. Well, I was going to say some. it's got hips. Oh, so I love that. It's That's got cool. hips on it. Um, I like it. Um, very beautiful. The thing that sticks out to me besides the bottle itself is the label, though, uh, I love that. This one almost have that I'm holding as the triple cast bottle, and it's almost like this old uh, blueprints of a building or something. Mm -hmm. um, I it just it, it, it's it's beautiful. That's all I can say about it. Really uh, simple to read. There's no flash on there. There you guys have won some awards, but I don't see those award stickers over there. <laughs> That's a big bothersome to me when people put those stickers all over the bottle and they cover up the beautiful bottle itself. Uh, the bottle should speak for itself, like you said, in the label. And really what matters is inside of this is that whiskey and listeners, I'm going to tell you, they just, just the first sip. That agave <laughs> was there for me, too, mm -hmm. on the sip of it. Um, that sweetness, just that little hint of uh, pepper on the back end, mm -hmm. yeah. um, just a tad hint. But I'm not getting any Kentucky hug on there. So I'm assuming you guys are sweet mash. Um, right now, uh, actually, uh, it, it it is a sweet mash. Yes, okay. we do a sweet mash. Yeah, but those yeah. other barrels we, you brought we, in were uh, some sour mash too. It is, yeah. yeah. But now we malt our rye, uh, so that's you know I think that that uh, kind of shines a bit there. Uh, the malted rye. A lot of people don't do that. It's a little more expensive uh, production wise to do that, but we we elect to do it for that flavor. So that uh, that shines through. And that'll almost give you that truffle taste uh, when you, I think when you, that's what I would uh, tone it to is a, a truffle. Um, somebody would say earthiness, but I would, when I taste malted or I get that truffle, a nice, nice, nice. truffle, mm. um, which a lot of people have never tasted a truffle before, but <laughs> I've been lucky in life. <laughs> But I, uh, the sweetness on here is yeah. what I like. You know, I, I tell Marlene that I was a weeded bourbon guy and I always pull that sweet side of bourbon. And, you know, I can pick those notes up a lot faster. Um, this still has that leather to it, that oak, the vanilla everybody's looking for, mm -hmm. but it has that sweetness of that agave I was talking about. So, I mean, it's interesting you're pulling that, you're pulling that particular flavor because uh, I, I've, I've recently become a mezcal. Uh, madam, as I call it, like whiskey women by day, <laughs> mezcal madam by night. And uh, I, yeah, there's, I, I'm now, now I'm like, oh yeah, that is, I mean, because I've been pulled more and more towards the triple cask as one of my favorites of, of our brand. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be t saying, I'm talking about, there's an agave, it's like a agave honey is okay. the, that taste I'm tasting. Uh, my daughter's big into agave honey. I always try to get it for her and um, she doesn't Oh, like that sh oh, nice. the sugar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. More yeah. of that. Does yeah. That, does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. It, especially as a texture, I would say, yeah. uh, because yeah, um, yeah it, it definitely has like a lighter, more viscous mm -hmm. uh, It's very mouth coating. It. Um, some, I mean, in the bottle itself, it's super dark and maybe that's that 12 year coming through, but you also got some Texas whiskey in here. So uh, Texas whiskey, if you put a three-year-old in here, is sometimes could be look like a 12-year-old Kentucky bourbon or Tennessee whiskey, right? That's right. Picks that color up pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about that for a second. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions in the world out there of what a whiskey should be. And <clears throat> I've talked about this several times throughout the couple of years, but especially on this trip because we're in Texas and that – People, you know, scotch drinkers will be like, everything needs to be 18 to 
30 years old, right? And maybe even older. But that's because they're using used bourbon barrels and it's taken forever because their climate's so much different over there. And then in the bourbon world, everybody's like, ah, oh, bourbon should be eight to 12 years old, you know, and they really geek out if something's older than that, right? Um, but to me, that's not true. Bourbon's an American spirit. Mm. It's made up from different regions in America, very large. You know, I think you could probably fit a couple of Scotland's, just a couple in Texas. In Texas, mm-hmm. yeah. no doubt. Uh, Maybe three or four. <laughs> yeah. So the Texas is itself, I always say, is a category to its own in Texas whiskey because you can age whiskey so much. I'm not saying you're rapidly aging it. It just is a different aging process down here. The heat can be so intense. Um, but people that think it doesn't get cold in Texas, I'm telling you, we were driving the other day, and I think it was 12 degrees or something. <laughs> yeah. It, was, yeah. it was cold. Um, so you get those cold, damp nights. And sometimes you get down here in the hill country, it cold, cold, dry nights. And I'm sure that affects these barrels. Sure. It's that big fluctuation you have. You know, it can be 25 to 30 degree difference from night to day here. So it's a big fluctuation in temperature. Yeah, I think we woke up this morning, it was 32, and this is winter time, 32, but I think it's supposed to be a high of 70 today. Right, yep. Um, I think in Kentucky, it's supposed to be 35 of a high and uh, low of like 27. So there's not a fluctuation. Do you know where that that kind of, it stops, there's a temperature where the liquid stops flowing in and out of the barrel itself? I, I do not. Uh, st- we're still, you know, experimenting with different things here. Um, as far as, uh, we have whiskey aging in Kentucky. We have whiskey aging down here, whiskey that we made in Kentucky that we're aging here. So we're comparing that. It definitely moves it along quicker down here, but I I don't know what that, you know, what that temperature break might be. I think, uh, I don't know if it's Pat Hyas or Ashley Barnes that said it was like 42 degrees or 43 where it, it stops going out of the barrel. That maturation stops, but here, if you got 32 and then you're back up to 70, that process is not going to stop at all, right? Um, right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, one thing that Heather ta- talks about a lot. It's like she'll she'll be up in the morning brushing her teeth and be like, oh, it's so cold outside. Good. The barrels are sleeping today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it is true that in Texas, we will, there's not a, a consistency of seasons. Like winter is just a suggestion of <laughs> what you might want to have in your closet. Um, but, you know, you need to be prepared to strip down to a tank top and and yeah. you need to be prepared to put on your parka, um, you know, for maybe three days in a row. And it's, uh, yeah, there's there's no, you just got to be flexible. And our barrels reflect that. Yeah. I, th- I remember when I was in high school, it was uh, Christmas break. And uh, we, me and my brother grew up, you scoot up Highway 281 here north, um, probably 110 miles. There's a little town called Event. That's where we grew up. But Go up on a ranch, and then there's a big rattlesnake in at Christmas time laying on some rocks. I mean, he's I'm six three, and he was every bit taller than I, you know. And I'm holding him up, and uh, I killed him. But it was December, and they were like, "Well, these snakes are supposed to be dinned up right now." Um, but he was out sun, and I think it was like ninety degrees that day or something. And uh, our parents were freaking out though. They're like, "Why'd you go back there?" <laughs> it's yeah. like, I don't know, because um, we knew where the rattlesnake dens were, right? Um, but. That you looks. know, that's one thing I love about Texas is is the uh, the climate, the weather down here. I I love this warm weather. Uh, folks told me when I moved down, they said, "Don't put your shorts up until Christmas. Uh, don't don't." And even then, yeah. like I don't know, maybe Valentine's Day. Yeah, <laughs> like we get some warm days in January right. too. Well, Marlene, let's talk about you. You had this. You've got semis coming in and out of here. Day deliveries are going on. People are picking up bottles and stuff. But what I did notice was showing up. Semi pulls up here, and there's a gigantic tank on there. It's got giant legs on it. It's probably, I don't know, maybe it's three stories tall, um, probably 30 or 40 foot tall, right? Right. And that's a big new slop tank for you guys. That's our slop tank, yeah. Yeah. And for our absolutely. listeners that don't know what slop is, what is that? Yeah, so that's our spent stillage that's left over. Um, you know, you've got uh, your beer. 
uh, that goes into your pot still. And once you pull the alcohol off of that beer, uh, basically you've got water and grain left. And so we don't dry it. We're, we're not equipped to do, uh, uh, to dry our grain, to separate the grain and the water. So, uh, we've got ranchers that come in, local ranchers here, uh, that come and, uh, pick up that spent stillage up. And so, uh, they feed it to their cattle. Uh, hogs, pigs, uh, some exotic animals uh, here in in the area, but uh, that's uh, that's a very important piece of equipment. If you don't have a means of getting rid of that spent stillage, uh, then you you can't move on and progress to your next batch of distillate. So it's very important uh, to have that uh, a tank like that so that you can continue to uh, run your operation. In a lot of distilleries, it, it's been around since the beginning of time. Me and you were talking, a lot of distillery plans you'll see or drawings, uh, you'll see cattle pens on distilleries, and then they'll be taking and pushing that slot through this pipe down to their stockyard, really, um, older distilleries and stuff. But you had to talk ranchers into taking it here. They were a little skeptical of uh, it. We did. We, you know, uh, uh some of the folks were a little skeptical. I uh, had a guy come in, you know, with a couple of five-gallon buckets, and he's like, you know, I'll try it and see see how uh, the cattle like it. And I thought, you know, I didn't say anything, but I thought he'll be back. And, <laughs> and, and he was. He come back uh, the next trip back, wasn't with two uh, five-gallon buckets. It, it was with a, a 250-gallon tote that he had on the back of his uh, back of his truck, so we don't have any any trouble getting rid of our spent stillage here. They, they were cows. afraid they're going to have a bunch of drunk cows. That's also. right. Yeah. I, I think so. Or maybe a drunk bull. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bad thing. You're just stumbling down Highway 281. Here. Pretty sure that's yeah. the Whiskey name drunk. of some dive bars I've ever seen. Were, the drunken bull. You were telling me a really cool story about uh, about Booker No and and you know the spent stillage and stuff. Yeah, so uh, you know Booker, uh, uh, there's there's two uh, distilleries, Jim Beam Distilleries in Kentucky. Uh, they have a, well, they have a bottling facility that's that's separate in Frankfurt. But as far as distilleries, there's one in Claremont, there's one in Boston, Kentucky. I was at the Boston plant. Well, that's where Booker now that's known as the Booker No plant. Uh, but yeah, years ago uh, they had a feed lot there. Uh, and for cattle and what have you to get rid of that spent stillage. Uh, and they also would uh, had uh, some hogs on uh, property too. But yeah, uh, Booker was always experimenting with different things. And uh, so he had the maintenance guys rig up uh, this wire mesh netting for him. So they would slaughter uh, hogs literally there on property in the old boiler house. And he would take one of the hams uh, from that hog and uh, would drop it over in. We had what we called thick slop and thin slop. And so he would drop that over into the thick slop tank and just let it hang. And, you know, that thick slop goes in at 200 degrees or, or, or better uh, temperature-wise and uh, would let it hang in there for about 24 hours. And uh, it was uh, made for a really nice, tasty ham. Man, whiskey and ham. Yeah. Mm. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to end this first half on that right here. A great story. Uh, and on the second half, I heard you guys got this little amazing barbecue joint right down the road here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Old, old 300. We love them. Yes. They're great. Um, we can, I consider them our partners. <laughs> so we're going to drink a rye whiskey on the second half, and then we're going to eat some barbecue. And or uh, they got a cocktail you, yeah. you ladies have made. Uh, we'll pair some barbecue with that nice yeah. stick with us listeners we'll be right back listeners you know what we love we love some seldom seen farms from open ohio aged in bourbon barrels for six to nine months kevin holly and his family they've got 2500 maple trees where they're taking that sap and they're boiling it down and making beautiful maple syrup but what they really do special is they take used bourbon barrels they put that maple syrup in there they age it six to nine months like i said and ship it out for you to taste in a cocktail to taste on pancakes waffles whatever you want to use it only takes about a half an ounce for a cocktail though and you replace that simple syrup with that it's very beautiful 
You can buy it by the case. You can buy it by a single bottle. Uh, they got the regular old maple syrup uh, for you to use for your children. But that bourbon barrel aged maple syrup is simply delicious. Uh, you want to check out SeldomSeenMaple.com. Go ahead and purchase some today. You will not regret it. They have some candles on there. They've got maple cotton candy for those kids in your house. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd check them out. All right, listeners, we are back, and we're still at Milam and Green Distillery in Blanco, Texas. I thought I heard some gunshots in the background. I don't know. Uh, this is the wild, wild west out here, and we got the wicked woman of whiskey, <laughs> Marlene Holmes, with us. Um, Marlene, uh, you got another whiskey in front of us, but this isn't a bourbon. Uh, this is our port rye. Yeah, it's a it's a rye whiskey. Uh, it's a three to three and a half year old rye whiskey, and we bring it in. I, you know, I tell folks when it comes through the gate, it's uh, rye whiskey. When it goes out the gate, it's Milam and Green. Uh, rye finished in a port barrel uh so we put our own uh our signature personality uh to this label actually but uh we get uh tiny port barrels in uh from portugal and uh and just to give you a little bit of an idea of how things move a little quicker um you know, a lot of times people have to finish out uh, a whiskey or a bourbon in a different cast for maybe a year, year and a half or two years. Um, depending on how fresh these barrels are, it can move uh, and, and our product is ready in about three months. Nice. And uh, yeah, so this is one's really lovely. Uh, we bottle it at 94 proof and it's just fabulous. Well, let's nose this thing. Cheers. Oh, it's definitely got that rye feel to it, but uh -huh. that Tawny Port has did something to this. It gives that little extra rose to it to me. Right. Um, I know that sounds weird, but that's what it is. I okay. used to thought, I don't want to offend you ladies, but I used to think Tawny meat and dirty woman is what I thought Tawny <laughs> meant. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know it was a, I didn't know it was a, a wine <laughs> or a port. Um, somebody told me that and I was like, I feel bad now, um, but <laughs> I mean, tawdry. I could see where you might get there with like an extra letter, but uh, I mean, I'm a yeah. hill country boy, so you know, some <laughs> some of those big words <laughs> escape me sometimes. Kind of like Kentucky guys, I you can, some of those big words are hard for us. There you go. <laughs> Just got that old sip away. I mean, look, it's definitely yeah, it's it's a New York Times uh, like yeah at, yeah I I I like it because it sounds to me like feathers, you know, like the yeah. you know, like a tawny sort of bird but you know mike this one uh this one uh, we're proud of all of our all, all of our labels uh this one's really special uh to us uh this one was just named uh best in show this past summer at the american craft uh spirits association uh best in class best in show and uh so that that was quite an honor for us to uh to pick up oh yeah <laughs> I mean, anytime you're and you're competing a lot against a lots right. and lots and lots of whiskeys. That, that's right? our peers. That's Everybody's right. bringing something to the table. That's right. Well, congratulations on that. That's that's an excellent award. That's right up in our backyard. There is where it was held and stuff. You guys yeah. didn't come and see us then, though. No? So shame <laughs> on shame on you. Um, but Aww. I had to drive all the way to Texas to come meet you. <laughs> but it was well worth my trip down here to come and uh, sip on this. Uh, so I'm gonna taste this. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's kind of a sweet tea-ish right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That's Hill Country Tea right oh, it's there. It's great. It's fabulous. I get a little, a little bit of chocolate, a little fig maybe there. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I mean, I I just love that it changes how I think about rye because that is, to me, not how rye usually behaves on my palate. Um, so that's, it was really the whiskey that drew me to the brand overall. Cause so it's like, how did you make a rye that I actually want a whole bottle no, of? No, the back end, it's also got a little bit of, uh, they would call that cowboy candy. Um, so a little bit of jalap candy jalapenos mm, right on the nice. back end, that spice. Oh, okay. Um, I like that sweet tea and, and cowboy candy right there. <laughs> Um, I mean, definitely, yeah. The spice. I mean, the rye is not gone. The spice is definitely always going to be yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Well, some ryes aren't. 
uh, overly spicy. A lot of people think sure. if you got a 95.5, it'd barely be any spice in it at all. And some of that spice from a rye would come from, a, especially in that 95.5, come from the barrel itself. But you get a Kentucky rye, that 65, you know, um, that rye is the spicy ones right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe yeah. Marley knows that. Well, I think, that. I, I think that uh, is a testament to the distiller, maybe, uh, their taste buds. You know, I had a rye whiskey uh, that come out of Virginia uh, mm. that I tried uh, about a month ago, and I'm like, you know, is this, how is this really rye? Yeah. It, it was fabulous. But I think that has to do with, you know, the personality of the person uh, that is making that product and where they make their cuts. You're going to have to tell me where that rye is from so I, yeah. <laughs> I can get we'll some do of it. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to drink a cocktail and eat some barbecue. Now, you guys got a barbecue joint right down the road. It's right on Highway 281. What's it called? Old 300. They are fantastic. Uh, just, I mean, I, we're just, we're really blessed that they're actually one of the closest places to eat, period, here in Blanco. But they are, yeah, that. They're the best barbecue in the area, in my opinion. Now, what's their, they got a, instead of a master distiller, they got a pit master. What's his name? They got a pit master, a lad, um, lad, I said his name Pepper. all ago, lad Pepper. That's it. He, they do fabulous. Yeah. That's a, a name crew. straight out of the old <laughs> west right there. He was born a pit master. Yeah. yeah that, that's definitely a name. That's almost out of like a lonesome dove or something. <laughs> that's right. Lad Pepper, uh, you get out in that street and we'll yeah. have a little gunfight. If you win, you have some of my brisket. Yeah. Um, we actually ate the brisket. I couldn't. I couldn't wait. My brother was over there gnawing on it already, so <laughs> I had to get a plate. That brisket is some of the best brisket I've had in a long time, and that's saying a lot. Come from me, sure, because I grew up eating that when brisket wasn't that big in Texas um, mm. back in the seventies, early eighties. My stepdad uh, would make briskets for us, and he had his own way of making it, and. Um, he coat it with yellow mustard, salt and pepper, um, dice up a couple of onions and jalapenos and smoke it just like that. And then he would wrap it after, I think about 12 hours on a stick burner with pecan wood. Dang. Um, yeah. Wow. Nice. And I'm assuming down here, they're probably using uh live oak or uh, post oak is what he's probably using down here at old 300. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. Yeah. What about sp- have you ever said, "Hey, could you smoke some brisket with our bourbon barrels?" We're talking about that. That's that's yeah. We we've discussed that. Uh, a couple of the guys that work there, they're they're the ranchers that come in to pick our spent stillage or our, our slop up, and uh, so yeah, that's the hoping to do something with those guys as far as the barbecue sauce or the uh, the brisket at some point pretty soon. Yeah, everything their their brisket was amazing, and I always say meat needs to speak for itself right um and for brisket brisket don't need a whole bunch of barbecue sauce on it whenever uh-uh. you go somewhere and just barbecue sauce poured all over it to me uh something's wrong with a barbecue i'm worried i'm like what are you trying to hide under that barbecue sauce right uh that brisket has its own flavor but you guys made a cocktail to pair with that what cocktail did you guys make so uh just another shout out to brenda our tasting room manager uh she she actually envisioned this. Uh, it's our port cask rye with a little bit of vanilla syrup and black walnut bitters. And then she ages it in a uh, tiny barrel for at least a week, I think. Uh, and then before serving it and with a orange peel and a cherry. Man, it, it, I got to say, you know, I've, just like brisket, you know, you're in a whiskey game. You're going to drink some old fashions in your right. life, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Everybody, every bartender I've met, they're like, oh, you got a bourbon podcast. Uh, let me make you my specialty old fashioned. Right. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's yeah. see what you got. Every every Tuesday, I have the privilege of being Brenda's uh, taster. Mm-hmm. Uh, she'll come to me with the cocktail and uh, it's like, okay, you know, what do you think? She does fabulous. So. I saw a couch in there. Is that the couch where you curl up, take a nap after that? <laughs> if you need to, if you need to, right? Yeah. What a job that is. I mean, it's to me, it's amazing that you came down here, you took that chance, but um, that you're putting out a great whiskey and you put together an amazing team. I say nothing, but you got bottling going on, labeling going on right now, and there's ladies in there just, uh, they're just working away, bottling whiskey and labeling and stuff, but they're smiling in there. Uh, it's not like a regular factory. I don't know if your guys are feeding these cocktails to them beforehand. <laughs> um, Brisket. 
I yeah. didn't brisket. There it is. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see no crooked labels or anything. That's no. No, you'll see uh you'll see this crew here if uh, if the label's not right, they're peeling it off uh because they know that's their work that goes on that shelf. And uh you know, they're kind of the crew behind the scenes a lot of a lot of times uh go unseen, but they they do a fabulous job. We've the crew here at the distillery is just fabulous. Now, what I didn't see running around here was any men. Yeah, yeah I don't right know if that's now. That's by design or nothing. No, no, it's. Uh, I mean, we would welcome uh, a male employee if uh, we we can find one who. I didn't wants- know if it was the whiskey making them smile, or I brought my little brother and all the ladies were looking <laughs> at him or not. But uh, <laughs> it, it still seems like a to me a, a beautiful place to work with whiskey. A great team, no matter whether it's a woman or a man, um, and that's testament to you your team that you've helped design um that says everything about a distillery when you come in a place and everybody's smiling and uh, greet you nicely whether they are a podcast or just a customer coming in i saw some people when we first got here had some cocktails they're sitting down on some lawn chairs under the live oak trees and uh smiles from ear to ear um they seem like happy customers Right. Um, I saw a yeah. couple of bottles there, so they obviously loved what they got. And there's wineries around here too. <clears throat> That's a yeah. we were like, wow, all these wineries here. Um, well, this has happened in the last like five to ten years. Uh, I mean, I remember growing up in Texas, uh, even in being in college, like this would never have been a destination for bachelorette party or anything like that but that's uh we have so many wineries and distilleries and breweries all on the same road you can hire you can get a car hire and just hit up five or more (laughs) in a day depending on you know your your uh what you want to be doing but it's it's really it's a fun time out here now yeah you're really not that far from austin right how many miles to austin Oh, what, like About 40 40? minutes, 45 minutes. Austin or San uh, San Antonio, we're about right in the middle. Right in the middle, right? Yeah, you can can stay in either and it's the same distance. And there's another cool little town down here called New Bronzeville, right? That's right. How far is that? Yeah, it's uh, about the same. About 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, 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 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Like or a, Wimberley. Uh, I mean, there's just, or Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. I mean, there's just so many little towns you can hit up as, uh, and you will be driving past so many distilleries and breweries on <sighs> well, your way. I was going to say, yeah. they got the Guadalupe, Guadalupe River down in uh, New Bronzeville, right? And San Marcos. And you can go down there. You can float the river. Yeah. They got yeah. one of the most awesome water parks in the world called That's the Slater Bond. Yeah. Um, Marlene's yeah. like, you know about that place? I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know all yeah. I know all about it just because uh, yeah. as a kid, it's been there forever. But um, so many great things for people to do. I would say, listeners, if you're coming to Austin, if you're coming to San Antonio, even if you're flying into Dallas or in Fort Worth, take that trip down 281. Make sure you stop in Blanco, Texas. It's not just where gunfights happen. <laughs> it's where whiskey is made. Uh, there is... Um, something magical happened right here at this craft distillery with some beautiful women. That's, they got one wicked woman out from Texas, though, so mm-hmm. she's she's what the the magical part about it, right? <laughs> um, putting that magic in the barrels, it, it takes that that love, that compassion for the barrel, the whiskey, and stuff, and really believing in what you are doing. And uh, Marlene, I can see that in your face and that love for the passion for whiskey as we were walking around and. Um, you've lived a great life in getting to do this. It's a, uh, it's, that's pretty amazing. And the stories you just have it to me is, uh, it's heartwarming to get to hear those stories and stuff and to share those with not just the America and the whiskey triggers here, but around the world, you know, we got guys in India and, um, Japan and Australia and, Oh yeah, um, South Korea Europe. wants our whiskey. I yeah, I get an email a week about that. So. I'm always surprised of a new whiskey drinker that reaches out to us and says, "Hey, I'm from here, and I listen to yeah. your show, and I'm trying to find this or find that." And I'm like, "Wow, somebody, you know, thousands and thousands of miles away from me." And um, if your whiskey's good, mm-hmm. it's kind of that old saying from a movie. Oh heck, with Kevin Costner in it, where he's. Uh, builds a baseball field you build it they will come Mm -hmm. right you built a distillery in blanco texas in the hill country and people are going to come yeah it was meant i think bourbon and whiskey was uh meant to be shared Mm -hmm. uh you know with family and friends and uh to enjoy yeah i'd uh 
I say you're right on. Spectacular cocktail, spectacular brisket, uh, spectacular whiskey. Where can we find you on social media? Well, Mileman Green Whiskey uh, will get you pretty much everywhere on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, whether you just plug it into your to that search thing. Mileman Green Whiskey, we are the only one, uh, fortunately. And uh, you can also uh, find our website, I think is probably where that that's uh, where you'll find all of our whiskey schools on YouTube and and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that whiskey school is just amazing and stuff. Um What's coming down the pike for Milam and Green? Is there anything special that's going to be coming out of some of these barrels? Yeah, we've got uh, uh, here in a couple of months, actually, we've got another batch, two of our um, Castle Hill series uh, that'll be dumped. It's beautiful. And then we've got our uh, distillery edition, uh, number three, that'll come out this fall. And then we've got, uh, it's got another project that'll come out later, mm -hmm. uh, September, October, uh, that uh, that we're working on that'll be uh, a pot stilled special uh, here out of the distillery. So yeah. I heard there's something that the old Weed of King of Kentucky is going to like. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Hint, listeners, look forward to that in the future from this uh a uh, beautiful little craft, craft, craft distillery. Um, I think it's pretty awesome. Well, ladies, I, I from the bottom of my heart, I know my brother thanks you too, <laughs> uh, treating us like royalty coming in here. Um, thank you very much. That was great of to course. have you, Mike. Thanks for coming and driving yeah, out. Anytime, you guys. Yeah, yeah. stop on by. You don't say that because we'll come in here and move mm -hmm. barrels around for you. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, that's literally why we're saying yeah. stop on by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll teach you how to use the forklift. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm big enough. I don't need a forklift. Oh, there you go. Hold that there sucker. You go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, listeners, you know where you can find us at. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. The best place to find us is on our private Facebook group, group The Bourbon Roadies. Three questions you got to answer. Are you 21? Do you like bourbon? Yeah, everybody likes bourbon, right? And then, do you agree to play nice? Because we don't tolerate any rudeness in that group. That means if you drink from the bottom of the shelf all the way to the top shelf where this uh, Milan and Green is, um, that's what we want you to do. Um, support each other. Love each other. Celebrate life. Celebrate retirements. Celebrate whiskey the way it's meant to be celebrated, sharing with each other. That's what we want to do. Come in and check that out. We get all kinds of uh, great people in there. Um, you might also find that we give away just a little bit of whiskey. So with that being said, I might be taking a bottle of Milan Green to give away uh, from them through us to give away to you. What you got to do is at noontime of this release right here of this podcast, what you got to do is tell me what Marlene did at Jim Beam as her first job. Um, tell me that on our Instagram post for this. Um the first person to do that at noon of that show, um, they'll get a bottle of the Milam and Green uh, whiskey. Uh, we'd really love to see you win that. So what I need you to do next is go ahead and scroll on up to the app, hit that check sign, that plus sign, that subscribe sign. What that'll do is tell you we got two shows coming out that week. One is a craft distillery review. Heck, you might even see some Milam and Green on that. Uh, our second show is an hour long, 30 minutes on the first half, 30 minutes on the second half. Uh, we got great guests on there, or it just might be me and Jim uh, talking on there. Uh, then what I need you to do is scroll on down to the bottom of your app down there. You'll see where you can give us that five-star review. Leave us some comments. Uh, you know what will happen if you don't. I'm going to come over to your house with my big old buddy, the big bad booty daddy of bourbon. He'll be dragging his big bad booty daddy wagon full of Milam and Green whiskey. We'll drink that all night long. Uh, by the end of the night, you're going to give us that five-star review, I guarantee. But seriously, those reviews, those comments, um, they help us open up doors to distilleries like this. It gets great whiskey in our hands to tell you about, and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, we also want you to check out our website, thebourbonroad.com, where we read, write articles. We have our reviews on there. 
You can check out our whiskey swag, the bourbon bullshitter t-shirt. Um, we got some flask on there, all kinds of stuff that you can purchase. It helps our veteran owned and operated business get on down to bourbon road. Um, so we really appreciate that. You can leave comments on there. Also, if you have a distillery in your backyard that you want us to talk to, leave us a comment. If you have a whiskey you want to get in our hands, leave us a comment. We'd really appreciate that. You can always reach us on our emails. He's Jim at the Bourbon Road. I'm Mike at the Bourbon Road. But probably the best way to reach us is on our Instagram accounts. You DM us on there. He's Jay Shannon 63. I'm Big Bourbon Chief, and we'll see you on down the Bourbon Road. Mm-hmm.